Hello everyone and welcome to Minor GUI or LTC Easy or whatever you want to call it. It's a, a new program that I made where you can mine. All you have to know is your GPU model. That's all you should have to know. If you're on ATI or if you're on NVIDIA, just know your GPU thread concurrency and you can use that. It's a real simple, real easy to use application. It only works on Windows. And uh, it's written in, it's a wrapper written in Java. And it basically allows you to manage a Reaper core miner. I used Reaper for two reasons. But I'll explain that later to mine to your pool. So it's a lot easier than trying to figure all this out yourself. It does most of the heavy lifting behind the scenes for you. And all you have to do is know what card you have. And if you have a multiple card set up, kind of know which card comes first in your whole system's hierarchy. So um, as you'll see, all it is is an application. If I go into folder options, uh, you know what, let me do this again. Let me delete this. Delete. What you'll download is a zip folder. It has, um, it's called Minor GUI or it might be called uh, Easy LTC by the time you get the download. I don't know, I might change it. You just go uh, to extract. If you don't have WinZip, it'll just be extract dot 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 in the Windows zip folder extractor. That's no problem at all. You can also use 7-zip to extract to a folder. Whatever, I really don't care. And you open it up and you'll have this application. If you go into control panel and folder options and you show, this is just kind of a for the lulz thing, show hidden files you'll see all the other files that actually come with it. These are the dependencies, the things it relies on. Minor GUI is actually just a little um, uh, at Windows application that launches the Java wrapper, which is called Litecoin GUI Miner. So you don't need to show hidden files. They're not going to help you at all, but just in case you're curious. Or it's always good to either, whenever you're going to use a program written by someone you don't really know or trust or whatever, to either decompile it and look at it all before you run it, or to recompile from source. There's also a source code download in the description, and it comes with all the dependencies, all the images and Reaper and stuff like that that you need. Um, you would also need to put Reaper and stuff in the same directory as the compiled binary, or you could run it straight from an IDE. Either one, it's up to you. Anyway, that's only if you want to, you know, make sure I'm not doing anything malicious with my code. If you trust me, you're good to go. Just double-click this, and EasyLTC will open up. So all you need to know for this is you have to have a pool account on one of the popular pools. I'll put links to the three most popular pools in the description. You need an account on just one of them. You also need to know what graphics card you have, and if you have multiple graphics cards, you're going to need to know kind of what the order is. But if you don't know, you can kind of just do trial and error until you seem to get it right. Or if you have, if you have like, say, four um, 5850s in a system, as long as they're all the same, it doesn't really matter. You just have to know that device counting starts at zero and goes up by one each time. So you have device if you have four GPUs, you have devices zero, one, two, and three, or zero through three. As well, if you have an NVIDIA card, you can mine with it. It's a little slightly bit more complex, but it's still very easy. So your pool host will be litecoinpool.org, at least for me. That's the pool I'm mining to. I have accounts on like eight pools though. Your pool port nine through through two is kind of the classic, but some pools use different ports or even use port eighty sometimes for like uh, donators your pool worker, and your pool password. Usually all this information can be found in a help or getting started page on your pool. Um, if not, you can just kind of poke around the website until you find something that looks like a URL. Your worker name is usually your username, period, and then a number, like one, or underscore and then a number, and the password is usually either one or X. The pool should tell you though. Press enter. What card? So let me just explain how this setup works here, my setup. My setup has a 5970 and a 5850 in it. So my 5970 has one of the two cores burnt out. It has the first card burnt out. So when I mine, I have to use only the second card. If I use the first card, my system will get very unstable and crash. It's sad. Uh, and then I have a 5850, and that whole card works. The card that burnt out in the 5970 is the first card. You only have to worry about this if you have like broken cards. Is still in your system, is the first card, so I can mine on devices 1 and 2, because 0 is burnt out. 0 is that very first card, and that one doesn't work. If you try to send to it, the driver will freak out and crash on you. 1 is the working core of the 5970, and 2, device number 2, is the working 5850 card. It's a sapphire. So what card? I'm going to do a 5970 first. And what do you want to call this miner? I'll call it miner number 1. And what device is it? It's device 1. Uh, normally, device counting starts at 0, but remember my device 0 is burnt out, so I'm using 1. But if you don't know, choose 0. 0 is probably what you're looking for here. And it'll start up. And it won't start mining right away, you just have to click start. But um, first I'll just explain the GUI real quick. This little Litecoin logo is mainly just to look cool, but it'll be red when you're not mining, when it's either paused or like Reaper crashes or something. And it'll be green when it actually is in the process of mining. Thread concurrency is determined by the program for you based on what you input it as your GPU name. 
Now, this is the little note, and only listen to this if you have an NVIDIA card and actually want to mine with it, which I kind of suggest against, but it's not a bad idea, considering Litecoins probably will go up a ton, and you're, it'll at some point break even with electricity or even surpass that by a good amount. Thread concurrency is uh, kind of depends from series to series of cards, like the 5000 series, the 6000 series, the 7000 series. And when you're talking about an NVIDIA, it's kind of up in the air, and there's not a lot of good documentation as to what thread concurrency works the best with what card. I'd recommend like 6144 is kind of a safe mid-range thread concurrency number to run, especially on maybe older NVIDIA cards like the 400 and 500 series, 600, you might be looking at more in the 10,000 range-ish. Usually it's um, a process of multiplying the amount of cores by some kind of modifier number and then kind of adjusting it based on how well it runs. Trial and error is the best way. And when it asks what your card name is, my program only identifies, only has in its memory bank the optimal settings for a bunch of ATI cards because they're the most likely to be mined with. That's what I put my time into doing. So if you have an NVIDIA card, instead of entering the name of your card instead of doing GTX 560, type in the thread concurrency you want to use. Because the way my program works is if you type in 5970, it'll look through its list until it finds 5970 or until it determines it's not there. And once it finds 5970, it'll pull the information that I said to use thread concurrency and stuff in my program. It'll pull that out and use that. If it can't find your card, it'll use the name of the card, your what you type in, say 5970, if it can't find that, then it'll use that for the thread concurrency. So, inadvertently, if you use an NVIDIA and you want your thread concurrency to be 6144, or you have an ATI card and you just like this thread concurrency better for your specific card, some cards are finicky and they like different concurrencies, just type in that number instead, and if it automat if it somehow finds a card with that same name, just change it by like a number, like 1, you know, 6145 or something. Work size, 256, that's normal, and intensity, 18. And intensity, 18 is kind of like the sweet spot between your card not crashing and it's still running. Lower intensities are better if you want to be able to like use your computer while it's mining. Right now, the miner has the intensity hard-coded into it. However, in a future release, I plan to have a little button next to it that you can change the intensity when it's paused and then start it up again. So, pretty straightforward with the start button and the kill hash per second is your hash rate, of course, to the um, your outgoing hash rate. Not exactly what the pool will show. The pool might show a little bit higher or lower based on your luck, but this is the actual hash rate. And then the start button, you know, starts it. So you press start, changes to green, and it says Reaper must compile a kernel. Hashing should start within two minutes. That'll only happen the first time you mount with the card, or if you re-extract um, the folder, or if you delete this .bin file. It's really not a problem, and as you see, it took way less than two minutes on this machine. So, Miner 1, which is a the second core of a 5970, is running at 286 kilohashes a second right now. And these little bars light up to show you kind of just a quick glance, without having to read this number, a quick glance of how good it's doing. So, each one of these represents 100. So this will be 100 kilohashes, 200, and one, if it ever hits 300, this will light up. My 5830, 5850 usually goes slightly faster, usually hits like 304, 305 kilohashes, so that should be three bars. So if you have multiple cards you want to mine with, just open this up again. Oop, not, don't rename it. Yeah, you could, wouldn't matter. Enter pool host litecoinpool.org. Pool port 9332. Again, this information should be on the pool's website. Or you could also post um, on the website, support forums, or on bitcointalk.org, the thread for that pool and ask, you know, hey, I need help with this. Or you could also ask me if it's one of the more popular pools. Um, I will have a list of the most popular pools in the description below, so you can go get an uh, account if you don't have one already. And you can use basically any pool, just kind of which one you like best, the interface, and also whether you like paper share and all that. That's a whole other uh, topic, though. We're not talking about that. So this card is a 5850. And remember, if I want a special thread concurrency, I just type it instead of the GPU number. I could also type ATI5850, but I'm just going to do 5850. If I wanted to mine with the thread concurrency of 12,000, and actually, let me demo that real quick. 12,000, and I'll call it uh, testing, and I'll put uh, device 2. You'll see now the thread concurrency is 12,000, because it couldn't find a GPU with that number, so it assumed I just want a thread concurrency of that. That's how to set a th custom thread concurrency if you need it. Anyway, I'm going to do it again with an actual correct thread concurrency. So, Alright, 5850, and I'll call this miner, miner number 2. I spelled miner wrong, that's embarrassing. And it's device number 2. So that'll pop up, I'll bring them up both side by side, and I'll click start here. It might crash because I'm recording a video, so it might be like, oh my god, I don't, I don't want to mine on you're recording a video. Hopefully it doesn't though. There we go. Cool, it didn't crash. 
Um, sometimes when I'm recording, it doesn't like mining. But anyway, you saw it just jumped up to 305 kilo hashes. Hopefully you saw that, and it lit up this third column right there. Just did it again. And so, on a card like a 5850, where it's often be right between 290 to 310 kilo hashes, you'll see that column change a lot. Whereas with a card like this that consistently stays right below 300, I hardly ever see this peak above 300. It'll stay with 2 generally. It's just kind of an at a glance, kind of just to see how it's going. It's not a big um, indicator of anything. This is your real hash rate. Um, if you have a really nice card, you might get five or six columns filled. Um, you probably won't see all of them filled, and don't worry about that. That's It's not normal to see all of them filled. That means you just have an amazing card. Uh, you might say, oh, something like a 7970, 7990 could certainly do it, but uh, that's split into two different cores, so each core would have its own window here. So basically, um, I separated it into multiple windows for two reasons. The first reason was I didn't want to have... Um, like, it, it's easier to just, like, have all these up on your screen um, if it's just a dedicated miner, and you can minimize them if you don't want them up, obviously. So it's not really an issue having all of them, and it's kind of nice to be able to see them all instead of having to, like, click, you know, a little arrow next to them to go to the next one. Also, this is way easier for me to implement. So in the future, I may have an option for making multiple uh, miners in the same window. It wouldn't really be that hard. It's just kind of like I wanted to get this out there. Um, so if you have like, you know, four cards, you might have four of these windows, which shouldn't be a big problem, but anyway, this program doesn't allow real advanced management of your GPUs, like pool switching in the middle of mining and stuff like that, or um, custom settings, a lot of custom settings, so if you want those, you're going to have to go with a more professional, like CG miner or something like that, and learn how to use that, but for just intros, I mean, these are, I'd say in CG miner, this one gets 303, and this one gets 311, and 312. So, I mean, these hash rates are not, it's not like you're losing a lot from the Java overhead. Um, it's really not, like, that big of a loss, and it's extremely easy to use. As far as stability, I haven't done extensive testing. I just kind of wanted to push it out and get it out there and then do bug fixes. But uh, the stability seems good. I haven't had much of a problem with stability at all. I ran it for about an hour, um, running both cards, and it was perfectly fine came back and this actually hit, um, it was at 301 when I came back, so I was happy. And I forgot what this one was at, it was like around the 310 range. So it keeps the hash rate pretty good. It's using the Reaper core itself, so it's not doing the mining. Um, and Reaper's fairly stable. Um, people, some people really hate Reaper. Some people really don't like CG Miner, so it's just kind of a personal preference. Personally, I think both programs are good. Um, but anyhow, so that's this before I ramble on anymore. The download link is in the description, and my fan's starting to get really loud, so you probably can't really hear me too well, so I'm going to stop these. Another thing to mention real quick is if you don't stop them, if they're still running and you close the window, the, pro the Reaper will continue to mine in the background. It might not be at all a big problem. It might be actually kind of nice. And I did this for two reasons. One, if Java crashes, your miner keeps running, and then if you need to kill that orphan process, you can just go into Task Manager, just open up Task Manager, and find Reaper in your background processes and close it. Or... Uh, you can just leave it running. And two, I did that because it was, um, well, one, easier to implement, and then, of course, you have the increased reliability because if Java crashes, your whole thing doesn't go down the drain. So anyway, hopefully this works for you, and uh, if you were having trouble with CG Miner, I'm hoping this will be even easier and this will work for you. If it doesn't, uh, let me know, and I'll try to apply bug fixes and stuff as bugs do come up. If you expand the window, it just shows white, so it's not very interesting. Just for those who are curious, this was made entirely in the ACM graphics library. Um, just kind of as, I wanted to, one, ACM is really easy, and two, since I'm doing Java tutorials with ACM, I kind of wanted to just kind of throw it out there of, hey, look what you can do with ACM. So, I made a minor application in ACM. So, anyway, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them, and um, as new stuff comes out, and new features and stuff, I'll be making probably new videos. And so, thanks, and happy mining.